Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this video we're going to talk about what you need to install to get started with JavaScript and Node.js. So installation instructions are not really my thing and they're going to vary from operating system to operating system. So my aim is here to give you enough information that you know what to install even if you have to look up um, installation instructions for your particular system. So if, you're a, if you've already been programming for a while, you, this will be easy for you. If you're a complete beginner, you might have to do a bit of Googling, a bit of searching on the internet. So um, the first thing that we need is we need some kind of terminal where we can uh, write commands. So um, if you're using Mac, by default, uh, Mac has this program called Terminal, and you start it up and the, the language of the terminal is what we call bash, and I can highly recommend bash. So if you, if you have a Mac, you can just start up a bash terminal. It's just there already. If you're using Linux, then you probably know what you're doing with terminals anyway, and you probably also have um, a bash terminal available to you. If you're using Windows, um, it's possible that you're more of a beginner, and then you need to look up some instructions. Now, there are two different things you could do here for Windows. One is to use the typical Windows console, uh, but the other is you could install or enable a Bash terminal for Windows because Bash is just so much nicer and more powerful than what's been coming with Windows over the year. Um, in Windows 10, there is, um, I believe, a Bash shell. We call it a Bash shell included with it you've simply got to enable it. So if you just search for Windows 10 Bash Shell, you'll find instructions for doing that. If you're using some other versions of Windows, another possibility is there is this um, uh, Git Bash. Let's Google Git Bash. Git for Windows. Um, so you can download and install that. And that gives you, a, I believe, a basic Bash Shell that you probably can use for this tutorial. Um, you probably won't need that, but... Uh, it's, a, it's another possibility. Now, um, once you've decided on what terminal you're going to use, whether it's Bash or a Windows console or whatever it is, you need some software that you need to be able to run within the terminal. Specifically, we need to install Node.js. So if you search for Node.js, you can find um, an installation uh, package or program for your platform pretty easily. Just download it and install it. And we need to get to the point where we can type two commands. We can type node, uh, let's type node hyphen V actually. We can type node hyphen V in the terminal. And instead of saying command not found, it actually returns a version number. So the hyphen V says return the version number. And um, we also want a command npm hyphen V, uh, which should also work should also return a version number. That's the point that you want to get to where you can type these two commands in your terminal and, and they give you version numbers. So probably just installing them is, is generally enough. If you, ha if you have any problems, don't be afraid to search for your operating system and you know something like install um, Node.js. That's what we're really talking about here, a technology called Node.js Windows. For example, you search for that, you can find detailed instructions, various pages on exactly how to install it. You could also search for things like install Node.js Windows Bash or whatever your operating system is or whatever terminal shell language that you, you intend to use. But um, Bash is a good choice. And again, you can find instructions. Once you've got to the point where you can open a terminal of, a terminal of some kind and you can type node and npm and it does something rather than saying command not found then that's it you've got it installed okay so we're also going to need an editor we need a programmer's text editor and the one that i'm going to be use using is called visual studio code now visual studio is a massive we call it an integrated development environment for uh well it's cross-platform but it's a massive piece of software which I used to use, I haven't used it in ages. It is good, but if you want certain features, you have to pay for them. Um, Visual Studio Code is a completely different thing, confusingly. I don't know, maybe Microsoft wanted to just help promote Visual Studio by calling it Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code has nothing discernibly to do with Visual Studio. 
Visual Studio Code is a lightweight, partly open source programmer's text editor. I highly recommend it. Um, I definitely recommend installing this. Um, so again, it's cross-platform. You can use it on Windows, wherever you like. Uh, so that's Visual Studio Code. And if you search for that, you'll find it. You can just download it and install it. Finally, uh, this is uh, completely optional. It's not central to the course at all. But you might want to install Git. If you search for Git, uh, not GitHub, hang on, Git, uh, and you look at that, so this is git-scm.com, you can install this Git software. Now Git uh, is, there's a version of Git integrated into uh, Visual Studio Code anyway, you can use it from there, but the ideal thing is, if you want to follow along exactly with what I'm going to do, um, including the Git bits, which are completely optional and nothing to do with JavaScript, then you want to get to the point where you can also type, let's try git, yeah, there's not an option, hyphen v, but git, if you type that in your console, it should also do something rather than saying command not found. Just git, it's called git. And what that is, it, it's just a version control system. It enables you to store the code that you're creating and store different versions of it. And it's, it, although it seems like an unnecessary um, extra thing, uh, or it might seem like, like that if you're a complete beginner. It's so useful to be able to store your code uh, in a way that you're, you're not going to lose it and store different versions of it. And um, so we, I'm going to actually create a video on next, I think, on how you would use, how you're going to use Git in this course. Um, so it's, it's not a course on Git, but we are going to use Git. If you can't be bothered with that, really, um, I do recommend it. But if you really don't want to use it, it's fine. You can follow this course without using Git at all. Okay, um, I think that's it. So basically you need to install Node.js, uh, you need to install Visual Studio Code, and ideally store Git as well. And I, you, need a, you need a terminal, so you need to be able to go to a terminal, and at the very least you need to be able to type node-v, npm-v, and they need to do something. You might need to Google for instructions on how to get those working. Ideally you should get Git working there as well um, and you'll have Visual Studio Code as your editor and I think that's it so if you can install all that lot one way or another don't give up uh, if you're a complete beginner it, believe me it's not that difficult you just need to find instructions and ideally um, a bash terminal but you can use Windows console as well okay so until next time happy coding